كما عم نوري رحمة الله عليه كمبلينا ثري حديث today I will cover حديث نمبر فور إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال حدثنا حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو صادق المصدوق إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علاقة مثل ذا مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم لا يعمل من عمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق إليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم لا يعمل من عمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه البخاري ومسلم So Abdul Rahman Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most truthful and the most trusted, he told us that verily the creation of any one of you takes place when he is assembled in his mother's womb for 40 days, he is a drop of fluid. Then it becomes a clot for a similar period for another 40 days. Thereafter it is a lump looking like it has been chewed for a similar period. Then an angel is sent to him who breathes the ruh, the spirit into him. This angel is commanded to write four decrees that he writes down his provision, his rizq, his lifespan, his deeds, and whether he will be among the rest one or the blessed one. I swear by Allah, there is no God but he, one of you may perform the deeds of the people of paradise, till there is, not an, uh, there is not but an arm's length between him and it, when that which has been written will outstrip him, so that he performs the deeds of the people of the hellfire. And one of you may perform the deeds of the people of the hellfire, till there is a not but an arm's length between him and it, when that which has been written will overtake him, so that he performs the deeds of the people of paradise and enters therein. The hadith reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ firstly mentioned about our creation, what Allah mentioned in the Quran as well, that how human beings are created. Firstly, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us from a drop of semen, which is in the mother's womb. And the Prophet ﷺ was mentioning that in you know, 40 days in, 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 in that situation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that will be changes uh, you know, uh, to a clot, then it is a change into, uh, so the three stages of the fetus consist of 40 days each, equaling at a total, uh, equaling to a total of 120 days for the stages to complete. So there are three stages it goes through, as the Prophet also mentioned in this hadith, if you see. So first, you know, a, a drop of fluid for 40 days, then it becomes a clot, uh, you know, for a similar period, a, a clot of blood for another 40 days, then it is a lump, you know, for another 40 days, you know, in the fetus in the mother's womb. Then Allah, then the angel comes and, you know, breathe the uh, spirit, the ruh into that, you know, uh, fetus, into the body. This is what the Prophet mentioned in the Hadith. And at the same time, you know, the angel is asked to you know, write down four things for this person. What are the four things? Four decrees that his provision, his rizq, how much wealth, how much rizq, how much provision he will have, have through it throughout his life. You know, his lifespan, how long he will live. SubhanAllah, we die, you know, sometimes we say, well, this person has passed away too early, isn't it? No one passes away too early. Everyone passes away on their own time. So if, if you know, if, if we should not say that he passes away too early. Everyone passes away on, on their own time, whichever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us. His deeds, whatever we will do throughout our, throughout our life, is good or bad, everything has been written. And then whether he will be among the rest one or the blessed one, the people of Jannah or people of 
have no heaven or hell it will be also written by the angel then in a uh, uh, abdullah masood that i mentioned that the person of continues saying that you know many of you some of you uh, or the, there is people who performs you know good deeds like the you know people of heaven like all the good deeds and everything however you know before the death they will they will be doing something that will take them to hellfire so we there are other people you know on the other hand some people that they are throughout their life they do you know a uh, wicked deeds the you know however on their you know, last before their last breath or they will be doing something good you know and because of that decree they will be going into the heaven now there are few questions you know may come uh, from this hadith that you know uh, so if you read from here there are other hadith collector so what's the what's the meaning of the second part of the hadith that you know when a person does an action of you know, uh, you know, he, you know uh, like a person of jannah but they are decreed to hellfire what does it mean so the scholars mentioning that's you know it is ex it's explaining is that as it appears in the eyes of people so who are munafiqun munafiq are people who in their mind they are non believers however they come with believers they you know, come into masjid pray with jamaa they do everything you know however they are not believer so it will be said that as it appears in the eyes of people they are look, look they are performing like good deeds however you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in their heart and because of their action they will be you know uh, put into the hellfire so this is like the munafiq or hypocrites they do the acts of the mu'minin the believers they appear in our eyes to be doing the acts of the ahlul, uh, ahlul jannah but allah knows best their end will be a disaster by being munafiqun they are actually denying the message of god in the deep hearts as allah mentioned in the quran and their end will be in the hellfire since they do not submit to allah in their hearts the scholars say when we do a research on a concept of or an issue mentioned in the hadith we shouldn't depend on only one hadith you know rather we need to find out other hadiths and which explain about this so some people on hearing this hadith as it is and without further explanation might feel despair fearing that they fall into the bad group of people mentioned so in, in, in the hadith uh, what the professor mentioned the people who are in, in hellfire decreed who people are going to jannah decreed so what's the point of us you know trying so hard and you know coming to the fajr and being obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala question may come isn't it so uh, this will lead to determination they may think that no matter what they do if their end has already been written then why should they bother to do good deeds this is the wrong attitude to have as it is based on a wrong perception allah is just we should trust allah if we are good to allah and trust him he will be good to us we should be optimistic and not you know pessimistic we follow allah's commands and make the effort to be good muslims and we should not despair during one of the battles a companion one of the sahabi said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was following him to fight in the hope that an arrow will be shot through his neck you know this this was their hope you know they want to be a martyr a shaheed in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they want to give their life for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they were hoping that a, an arrow will be shot through his neck coming in from the and from the front and going out the back the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to that person that companion if you are honest with allah allah will be honest with you the sahaba died exactly as he hopes so subhanallah so you know what lesson we learn from that there is that if you despair from the mercy of allah you say oh what's the point of doing whatever allah has written for me it is done now then allah will be like you know, for you allah will be like this however if you hope for allah that you know i am listening to allah i am obeying the commandments of allah i am i am i am you know obedient to allah and his messenger allah will allow me to be you know with the prophets to be in jannah you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be like he to you like this so the main you know lesson we learn from this hadith although 
it is written whoever will be going to Jannah, whoever will be going to hellfire our duty is our job is to amen now sallam now that we obey and then we accept and we submit ourselves in the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there are you know one one of, one of the stories has been mentioned about a, a wali Allah a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, you know this person uh, you know before uh, uh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that person used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for many many years because those people used to live for hundreds of uh, hundreds of years before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the old you know, ummah so this person used to you know, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night in sajda in sajda Jibreel alayhi sallam whenever he comes he finds this person in sajda so Jibreel alayhi sallam looks at the at the destiny of this person and he sees his name is written among the people of hellfire among the people of hellfire so he asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah this person he is so you know sincere to you we worship so much to you and we see i see his name is written among the people of hellfire you know why so allah said this is my decree this is my this is what i you know i've done or oh, this is my decree you now this is my decision so he said oh allah you know if you know shall i tell this you know decision you know to this person that you know he's been doing this for hundreds of years and still his name is among the people of hellfire shall i tell him that allah said okay you can go and you know tell him so jibreel alayhi salam came as a form of human being and told this person that oh so and so you've been worshiping allah for you know so many years but do you know what allah has done for you what he decreed for you he said no i don't want to know i don't need to know so he said allah has decreed for you that you are the a person of hellfire you are a person of hellfire he said, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, you know, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, thought of me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has considered me of something. I'm so thankful to Allah. You know, I, I thought even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't consider me as, an, as, a, as something. But he has considered me to be a person of hellfire. I'm so grateful to Allah. He fallen into sajda. And thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for at least considering him to be in his hellfire. Subhanallah. To consider him to be in his hellfire. You know, and he was thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel was shocked. Look at this person. You know, he's been worshipping Allah for so many years. And when he knows that he, Allah decreed for him to be in hellfire, Yet, you know, he's happy that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has considered him of something. So he came back to Allah and said, oh Allah, you, have, you know, this person is very ajib, he's a very strange person. You know, when I mentioned about this, you know, he went into sajidah and he's thanking that he, at least you considered him of being something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, now look, you know, his destiny. So Jibreel looked and see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his destiny in Jannah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So our duty is uh, another another story similar uh, and another person is a wali Allah and is a, is a very high level rank of wali Allah and he got three you know uh, disciples they also become became you know, great in their in the level and this wali Allah these three you know uh, uh, there they are three brothers actually these three brothers you know that their maqam has been raised so much that they could see sometimes you know allah allow them uh, re remove the veil so they can see things so one day they were looking at the decrees of people and they were de looking there you know a decree of their teacher their sheikh and so they saw that the sheikh's decree is in hellfire all three brothers the following morning they're discussing you know what should you do you know the person we are you know living our life throughout our life you know, he, Allah put him in, in, in a hellfire. What we are doing? We are wasting our time being with him. So two brothers said, no, we will not be with him anymore. We will you know, leave him. One brother said, no, we cannot leave him. Because of him, we are how we are today. So it doesn't matter whatever the situation, but I cannot leave him. So he didn't leave. However, he was very sad. Day and night he cries and cries and cries. Because he loves his sheikh. He loves his sheikh so much. Because of his sheikh, he's here today so the sheikh realizes that that this student of his you know is being a bit sad so he asked him what's wrong and he you know fall, falls in tears and crying and sheikh realized you know uh, said go on tell me what's so you know sheikh you know i've seen something about you 
in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Shaykh said, so what? So he realized the Shaykh already knew that. So he asked, do you know that? He said, yes, I know. So then still you are in this path and you know, he said, son, my duty is not not to look what Allah has written for me. My duty is not to be concerned about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for me. My duty and responsibility is to live my life as Allah is pleased with me. You know, I don't know what Allah will do with me. Uh, my concern is fearing Allah, being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. So, so next day this student saw that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the decree of his shares to be in the person of Jannah. So it's a true you know, a stories you now to show us that what our concern, although Allah knows if we go to hell or not, you know, one of, one of the uh, Shaykh also was mentioning on the story. It's actually the story of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. That a person said, if Allah already decided for us to be in Jannah or Jahannam, you know, why there should be, uh, you know, a day of judgment and this, these things, you know. Or, or, you know, why should we be bothered to uh, you know, do good deeds or to stay away from bad deeds? Because everything is decided already. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi threw a stone on him. He got hurt and he, you know, went to the qadi uh, for the for you know uh, complaining. So the qadi asked Imam Abu Hanifa, "Why did you do that?" Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, said, "I replied to his question." So what's the question? The question is that if Allah has decided everything for us, why you know He, he judges us or why He will be you know punish us? So you know if, if Imam Abu Hanifa replied that if Allah has decreed also in His decree that I will hit him I will hit him I'll hurt him then why did he come with the complaint why did he come with the complaint so this is you know we need to understand that although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for everything for every one of us but our job is you now to go out and look for rizq our job is to go out and you know, uh, live our life in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala staying in the form of the haram and working for halal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me and every one of us uh, to accept what's been said and allow us to be, you know, uh, uh, act and be obedient in our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Is, uh, what's her name? Aliyah. Aliyah, would you come to the front and read? Awesome.